Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and once again, it's the start of a new month, and that means it's time for Ask a Herbert Erpaderp. I don't think I've got anything to talk about, so let's get right to the questions. Argonaut248 said, What would you say is your most liked kit you built in 2021? Definitely the ICM Field Toilet. I don't actually know, really, can't remember everything I built last year, but I really enjoyed building the Tacom Saint Chamond. For the most part, it was a bit annoying in some places, but overall it was a really fun build. Also, I really like the Rubicon Centurions. I guess if I were to actually go through and look at what I did last year, I'm sure there'd be something else I really liked that I'm forgetting. Unless you mean which video got the most YouTube likes, in which case I have no idea. I don't really pay attention to that kind of thing. That British model guy said, Will you build a mouse for your mice? I have been tempted, but mice have no respect for anything and they would just destroy it. Not only that, but I would be concerned that the stuff I'd need to use to make the mouse might be toxic for them, and that wouldn't be much fun. Loki said, It makes me happy to hear you like Christmas ham. How do you like your ham prepared? Here in Sweden, we do it with breadcrumbs and mustard. How do I like my ham prepared? Yes. I've never had it with breadcrumbs and mustard, but I'd like to try that. It's probably pretty good. For Christmas, we usually just have a big leg of ham. It's cold and you slice bits off of it. I don't actually know how it's prepared. I'm no food preparationologist, but I know that it's not raw. It's wet cured or something like that. So it's not really prepared in any fancy way, it's just ham. But it is really delicious. Mmm, ham. M4 Sherman Addict said, Have you ever had a fan recognise you IRL? To be honest, it feels a bit weird to say that I have fans. I'm not sure I'll ever get used to that kind of thing. I don't think I've ever been recognised while out and about, or at least nobody's approached me and tried to engage. Though I have encountered that stuff from playing in bands makes more sense that that'll happen because they were local bands and local people meet me because I'm local. Yeah, that makes sense. Hetz's Gunner Hetz said, What if there was a 135th scale model of the Rat Tank? It would be quite large, I would imagine. That's what. I would be kind of interested in getting my hands on it, but I don't think I would have anywhere to put it, and I'm pretty sure it wouldn't even fit in my workspace so I could build it. Not without moving the cameras way back. And even then, I doubt it would actually fit. It would be cool, though. Trekan Belovich said, Any advice on how to use a spoon properly? I have no idea how to use a spoon. The locals can still remember the Herbert Erpert Up spoon disaster of 98. Oh god. Good luck. Archmagos Dominus Neveron said, How's the group build showcase video coming along? Well, the current group build hasn't ended yet, so that's not even started. And the previous group build I kind of dropped the ball on, I guess. Major General Bunk sent me the entries midway through last month, but I've just not really had the time to get anything done. I did consider combining the previous one with the next one, but I don't know, I'll probably just release both around the same time. I am expecting to have a little bit more time this month. I apologise for the delay. Hercheon said, Have you ever considered giving your inner voice a video to do so that it can see that it isn't as easy as you make it look? It would probably just make an excuse and leave. What a bastard that inner voice is. Martin Gotham said, How many panthers can a panther panth? And also, how many panthers do you have in your collection? I think a panther can panth as many panthers as it wants. It's really up to each individual panther, and they'll all be different. I've got no idea how many panthers are in my collection. Certainly more than 10, because I'm pretty sure I've got at least 10 15mm scale panthers. Maybe 15? I don't know, and I really don't feel like going to the effort of counting them either. But there are plenty, and I've probably done a video on all of them, so you could probably work it out that way if you really want to. Ratto said, Have you tried sprue goo? It's to me extra thin mixed with sprue pieces. It can be used to fill gaps on models when assembling. I haven't tried it myself, but I have seen it. And I think if I were to make some, I would just use acetone. Though, now that I actually think of it, putting it in an old extra thin bottle seems like a pretty good idea, what with the brush and all. I imagine it could end up being quite messy to use, and I think I'd prefer putty, really. 
That said, that is just an assumption. Maybe I should try it myself and see if I like it or not. I can imagine it having a lot of uses and it would probably even be stronger than putty. Maybe one day I'll give it a whirl. Martin Gotham said, What colours do I need to paint an erp-a-derp? Mostly hot pink, maybe some purple as well. And if you've got a kit with interior detail, you'll need some reds for like blood and guts and black for my soul. Monol said, What's your opinion on the YouTube dislike count having been removed? Somebody also asked about this in the YouTube comments. Really I feel kind of indifferent to it. The likes and dislikes aren't really a tool I've ever used as either a creator or a viewer. I have seen a lot of people being really angry about it though, but at the same time I see a lot of what seem like rather disingenuous arguments about it. I've seen a lot of people saying, Now when I watch a tutorial video for how to rewire my house I could kill myself because I can't see dislikes. I think a lot of people making those kind of comments, particularly when I see them on Reddit, I think a lot of those people are just the usual whiny babies who are mad that they can't try and upset people by disliking videos anymore. I've never found it useful as a creator myself because 1. Likes and dislikes don't factor into the subjects I make videos about. If I've decided to build one kit I'm not going to change my mind because some randos clicked thumbs down or whatever. And 2. I've had quite a few people over the years tell me that they're going to dislike all of my videos because I've said something they disagree with or whatever. The idea being that I'm supposed to get all angry about it or something. The reality though is I don't care, and in the end it's still engagement. I'm sure that's not at all unique to me, but what it does tell me is that likes and dislikes don't really have much value as far as analytics go. Before this dislike removal thing I've never really seen anybody say they rely on seeing dislikes to decide if a video is worth watching. It's never factored into whether or not I watch a video, in fact I pretty much never look at the like or dislike ratio. It kind of seems like something people who can't think for themselves would do. Also, I think the comments are a better indicator of if something in particular is bad about a video, if that makes sense. Obviously comments can be deleted or turned off, but still, I think that's probably a bit more informative than a simple thumbs down. There are also people saying that YouTube have done this because big companies don't like it when people dislike their videos, and that does make some sense. It is the sort of thing a big corporation might do, but you really don't need to see the dislikes to know something comes from one of these big corporations. You know, like news outlets or late night TV shows and stuff that dump their stuff on YouTube. They're pretty obvious, and just don't watch them. I don't think it's that big a deal, really. It doesn't change anything for me, and really there's a lot of more important things to be upset about. Winter Spanish Boy said, Are all the jokes on Australia's wildlife true? Jokes? What jokes? To be fair, a lot of the stuff here can kill you, and we do kind of like to scare people about it, but it's not really a big deal. Most dangerous wildlife just wants to chill, and if you leave it alone, you'll be fine. The trick is just to not be stupid. I suppose that is a bit easier said than done, really. Sneaky Zaku said, At what point do you consider it time to shake up the status quo with your models? Whether that be trying a new technique, a new kind of model kit, or just painting something radically different to the norm, such as, say, the Pink Panther tank. I would say that there isn't a specific time for that sort of thing. It's just whenever you feel like it. And that'll be different for everyone. For some it might be never, and if you're happy building only tanks and only painting in the way that you've already been painting or whatever, that's fine. But if you see a new technique or if you've had an idea for something to try, and you think it might be fun or beneficial to give it a go, that's probably the right time. I don't know if that makes sense. Does it make sense? I think it does. I have seen some people talk in such a way that it seems they think that there are specific levels where you should be doing this or that at certain specific times in your hobby journey. Like there's some sort of laid out progression that everybody needs to follow. But that's a bunch of bullshit that really should be disregarded. I wouldn't worry about them. I say, go at your own pace, try things when you want to try them, and paint a pink panther tank when and if you feel like it. Trekan Belovich said, how do you avoid all of that? Uh, political uneducated who are so loud nowadays. It's kind of hard. Loud dumbs on any side of the political spectrum are everywhere. 
I mostly just try to avoid social media, or at least curate it in such a way that you only see interesting things, which is kind of hard but not that bad. It's a bit more challenging in real life, especially around work and obligations like that. Sometimes it's just impossible to avoid idiots, and you've just gotta grit your teeth and get through it. I wish I had some good advice, but I don't. I guess the trick really is just not to engage. Is that good advice or the obvious? I can't tell. M4 Sherman Addict said, Blood for the Blood God? I guess that makes sense, but the Blood God can't have any of my blood. I'm using it. Hetz's Gunner Hetz said, Since it's now the year of the tiger, have you thought about painting one of your unpainted tigers or king tigers in festive Chinese New Year's colours? It never occurred to me. I guess if Chinese New Year was a bit more relevant to my life, I might, but I've already done a tiger tiger, and I don't really want to do it again. Also, it's way too late to start thinking about doing that and getting it done in time to be relevant. I think actually the Chinese New Year's has already passed. If not, it's close and there's no time. It's probably not a bad idea to try and do things that are somewhat relevant to current events and such though, especially if they coincide with something I already want to do anyway. In the YouTube comment section of last month's Ask a Herbert Herbert in relation to a question about hobby superpowers, Artsy Gem said, My modelling superpower would be to be able to immediately spot dropped bits before the carpet monster consumes it forever. And the British model guy had similar sentiments. I definitely agree. If you've seen my streams, you'll know that I drop stuff on the floor from time to time, more often than I would like, because I would like it to be never and it takes time to then find said dropped parts, if possible. Even when the floor is clean, it's quite a bother. I would really, really love to be able to immediately spot dropped bits, like maybe they could flash red or something. That would be amazing. Why don't you just stop dropping stuff? Why don't you shut your filthy mouth? Yantima said, which way do you want to go with your channel in 2022? I don't have any big plans to do anything dramatically different or anything like that. I'm going to just keep building the models I feel like building and making videos about them. But I do plan on doing some more painting this year. As I mentioned in the half-track painting video that went up a couple of days ago, for me, 2022 is the year to clear out the paint queue. I would also like to resume the memorials videos when I have time. That and painting videos aren't going to be on any particular schedule though, they'll just happen when they're ready. I think most of the things I want to focus on aren't really to do with my channel directly. I do want to keep streaming quite regularly, I've been having a lot of fun doing that. I'd also like to try and be a bit more present on social media. I don't really like social media, but being a bit more present on social media should lead to more people watching my videos and I might see some more interesting things and get ideas and so on. The trick is to not just be all, hey, come watch my videos, but to genuinely interact with people and stuff. So I've put some effort into curating my Instagram and Twitter a little bit so that they're a bit less horrible to use. So I guess that's not quite the answer to the question, but I don't just do YouTube, and I guess the direction I want to go with everything is to be more visible and to grow. Not really an astounding thing to want, I guess. I don't think there are any creators out there who want less people to see the things they do. So I guess that's my answer. Okay, so that's all the questions for this month. Let's have a look at some of the models that have been shared in the Discord community over the last month. Shtolus? I'm probably not saying that right at all. This person has finished a little base for their quite awesome looking little SDKFZ250. Both the model, which I believe to be a special hobby 72nd scale kit, and the diorama are really really well done. We can see that, Herbert! I know, it is nice to say though. It even fits into the palm of the hand, which I think is amazing too. In my opinion, it's a bit more challenging to get such good detail in smaller scales than larger. Very good and convincing work. I look forward to seeing what you do next. Monol shared this Panzer 38T. This is the Tamiya 48 scale kit, and it looks awesome. And if you've seen the models Monol's painted previously, this is not a surprise. The first three images depict the model without the commander, but unlike myself, Monol has included the commander. He says this is probably the weakest part of the kit, but the paint on the commander does look rather good, so that really helps. 
He kind of looks like he's casually leaning and having a conversation with somebody in front of the tank, perhaps threatening to run them over. Corned Beef has finished another tank. I don't know the manufacturer or scale of this kit, but it's an M4A3 E8 Sherman Field Expedient Jumbo. I'm assuming that means it's been up-armoured in the field. I really like this, the stowage is quite good, and I particularly enjoy the Esky. Or if you're not Australian you'd probably call it a cooler. Somewhere where you would keep some nice cold drinks, or at least that's what it looks like to me. The mud that's been flicked up onto the front plate looks really good as well. Very nice work. Ratto shared his first model of 2022. This is Bellacor, the Dark Master. Bellacor? Belacor? I don't know how to say that. But this looks really cool. He's painted entirely with black rattle can and brush, mostly dry brushing with the colours, and I would say the result is rather effective. Ratto calls this fellow the Manlet Prince, because he's very small compared to the other demon princes. Poor little fella. Looks rad though. Trekan Belovich shared these Hungarian Toldi 2A light tanks. Something something Toldi you so? Stop trying to be funny, Herbert! No. Okay. These are 15mm scale resin and metal tanks from Battlefront, and they look pretty good. And that's mostly because Trekan has painted them really nicely. You can always count on Trekan to do some really nice work. Okay, so that's all of the models for this month. Though, of course, there was a lot more than that shared on Discord. So feel free to pop on over there and check things out. And maybe share some of your own work. That'd be cool. Ask a Herbert Herbert up will return next month. You might have noticed that it's a little bit later than usual, and I can't remember if I mentioned this last time, but I've decided that Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb will now come on Thursday nights, local time, for patrons, and Friday night, also local time, for everybody else. It's not a big change, just a day, but it is a change. This is to avoid conflicts with my Wednesday night modelling streams. Anyway, thanks to everybody who shares their models, asks questions, and an extra big thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you all. If you haven't already, why not subscribe here on YouTube? Also, you can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord or social media in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have a fantastic day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.